all right, I went to the dump and I dumpster dove and I got all my stuff back because I realized that taking it to the dump was a bad idea. So now that I have the oil pan back on, I'm going to install the dry sump pump. So this will be kind of a part two. I already did a brief explanation with the pan off and how it works. And now it's kind of buried under all this crap. But there's the pump. There's the dry sump pump itself. And then there's some other crap in the way like this distributor. But the lines from the pump to the tank, which is right here, are still attached. And I'm going to put the pump on and explain how it works hook it back up to the pan, and I'm gonna show you my trick little uh, fourth stage that actually attaches right there. And that's the pickup tube. That blue tube is the pickup tube. And it sucks oil from right here, right out of the lifter valley. All the top end oil never sees the crankshaft or the rotating assembly. Gets sucked out right there, goes right back into the tank. The pump's on, the bolts aren't tightened yet. Uh, it's driven by this belt, it's like a timing belt, so it's got teeth or it's cogged, and there's teeth in the pulley and teeth in the pulley. So this is the oil pump right here, guys, and the belt that drives it does not slip. Um, what this does, each one of these is an oil pump. So this is what they call a four-stage dry sump because there's four oil pumps. So it has a common shaft that goes in through the front, drives all the pumps. One side of the pump sucks and the other side makes pressure. So the way this works is this is sucking and this is sucking. So all the oil that goes into the pan that drains back into the pan gets sucked out of the pan via these hoses here goes through the sucking side of whichever stage of the pump it's hooked to, and then comes out of the top of the pump, and then these lines go into this big oil tank. It's about a seven or eight quart oil tank here. And then for the oil to return, so it's hooked up backwards. So these lines are, are blowing oil out up into the tank, this stage right here is blowing oil out, except for this oil line. If you follow it, it's going right to the oil filter boss. So that's our oil pressure line right there. And then the line on the other side of this stage, so this is our pressure, this stage right here. So there's, a, it's, there's so much going on, but there's a hose right here. It's this one. And it is going, if you follow it, it's going to the bottom of the oil tank. So tank full of oil, this line right here sucks oil out of the tank into this stage of the pump, puts pressure in this line and sends it to right into the oil filter boss. All the oil that drains into the pan gets sucked out through these two. And then in the early days of Pro Stock, they had so much trouble keeping valve springs in these things. Uh, they were good for one or two passes and you'd have a broken spring almost every time and 10 passes and you were done with the springs. So I got the brilliant idea of completely covering the, the valley with epoxy, except for at the very front so the oil can drain back when you're under braking. And then I put this, it's kind of dark, but this blue tube right here, this is a pickup tube. So I have a stage of this dry sump, this line right here. And this plums right there. So full oil pressure now, took the restrictors. They, they used to go right here in the block. They restricted the oil flow to the lifters, which in turn restricted the amount of oil going up the push rods. So now there's no oil restriction, full oil pressure to the lifters, full, full oil pressure up the push rods, and I have the TND rockers that uh, the oil goes through the middle of the rocker arm, and it shoots out right on the side of the valve spring. So it cools them and lubricates them so that the it's a triple spring, and it keeps the springs from rubbing against each other and generating a bunch of heat, and plus that wears the springs down. But... 
These springs right here have at least 100 runs on them, and they're still perfectly fine versus, like I said, one to two passes, we'd have broken springs, and 10 passes, we'd be throwing the whole set away. The other thing I want to point out real quick is having this pickup tube, having this suck the oil right out of the valley, so the oil, you know, you're under G-force, you're accelerating, so all the oil goes to the back of the head, drains back in the very back of the motor, and then gets picked up right here. And because this is, the lifter valley is completely blocked off, it makes it so that the oil doesn't get whipped by the cam and by the crank and the rods and all the rotating parts. And that does, a, it does several things, but two major things is it doesn't turn the oil into foam, doesn't whip a bunch of air into the oil. But the other thing is there's a huge parasitic loss when those parts are turning at ballistic speed, they have to move the weight of that oil out of their way. And believe it or not, at a high RPM, it's a significant amount of horsepower that it takes to do that. And so it's, it's a win all the way around. There's just way better oil control and the engine just lives a lot longer the way it's configured. That's been my experience anyway. Another thing to mention on this dry sump setup is these return lines, the reason they're attached right here, right to the edge of the tank, instead of just blasting it into the middle, um, is because obviously it's not gonna just be sucking solid liquid out of the pan, it sucks a lot of air with it. And so it's blowing oil back in to the tank, but it's also blowing a lot of air, which air bubbles in oil is not a good thing. So two things, it blows it in at the very top of the tank so the air has less distance to travel to get out of the oil, but also blows it in almost like a, like a centrifugal thing. It's on the edge of the round tank, so it blows the oil and, and it kind of like centrifuges the oil around the tank, which also helps take the oil out or the uh, air out as the oil, you know, runs down the walls. Um, and then the other thing is because there's so much air being pumped into this tank, uh, you got to have some way to vent that air. So that's what this is. This is a vent for the tank. And then that air goes into this little guy. We call this a puke tank. And um, this has a vent on it. And I just have a rag and a zip tie because it does sweat a little bit of oil. It's kind of annoying and it makes a mess. But anyway, oil coming in with air. Got to vent the air out of there. This is the vent goes into this tank and yes some oil does end up in this tank and this is the drain so you can just drain the oil off i check it every run